呃，其他的人员，因为我没有特别准备，就是我要替代那个朱平老师，他自然有呃健康的的问题，什么不不太严重，所以我我下午呃呃，我会主持这个这个谈话。所以我呃 ，our first speaker is、uh, Yannick Bart, who is a, a very talented、uh, French、uh, STS researcher. He's a sociologist. His PhD was on the policy of nuclear waste in uh, in France. So, and this is especially uh, the, the topic that we will talk um, this afternoon. But of course, he has. Uh, when when was your PhD? Like, when when did you finish your PhD? Two thousand. And I remember your uh, PhD was published in two thousand six. Yeah. And after that, you ha I had uh, many yeah. papers, and even recently, I. Uh, uh, in Denmark, for the Congress of the Sociology of Science, you had uh, run a, a panel on nuclear policies, uh, nuclear waste policies in many European countries. So I, this uh, Yannick has a very, very rich experience. And then we have uh, Fan Mei Fang uh, uh, from the University of Yangming uh, about the assessment of uh, uh, nuclear energy uh, in Taiwan. And then we will have uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Zhongbo Hui. Oh, by the way, you become a professor. <laughs> Felicitations. Um, about the... Um, Guo Hui wrote a very interesting paper about the uh, nuclear politics in East Asia after Fukushima. I think you were inspired by the book of Gabriel Esch on the radiance of friends, right? So you know, your paper focused on this, and it inspired you. Well, what 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 lessons can we learn from that? The, the French experience of, of uh, uh, all, in Taiwan, a lot of people ask me, "Hey, you are French. Why in France do you have so many nuclear plants? Why why is it so important in France?" I say. Please read the book by Gabriel Esch. <laughs> it's the best answer I can provide. The so French cooking. Huh? We call that the French cooking. French cooking. Either way, you know Gabriel Esch is American. So <laughs> it's very a shame that we needed an American scholar to do that research to realize that we were so much nuclearized, as he says he has this concept of nuclearized. Okay, so let's start with uh, the presentation by Yannick Bart. And let's uh, warm up your moment. Good afternoon. Thank you both for the, this presentation and for the invitation to join this, uh, this conference. So, I'm going, to, after the, the overall picture of nuclear in the world, I'm going to talk about a specific issue in France, and this specific issue is nuclear waste policy. The title of my presentation is a question, very simple, but a little bit general. Could nuclear waste conflict be absorbed by democracy. Um, what I am going to do in this uh, presentation is first to, to try to present an overview of the history of French nuclear waste policy. I will, I'm going to talk especially about the management of high-level nuclear waste. As you know, uh, they are the most dangerous uh, waste, in fact. And it will be difficult in the 20 or 30 minutes to, to, to propose a, a summary of uh, a book I wrote on this issue. So uh, it's sometimes a little bit frustrating to talk in 20 minutes uh, of a book, uh, an entire book on this subject. But in fact, it's not really a problem because uh, my objective uh, this afternoon is to share uh, some reflection about nuclear waste controversies and more generally about techno scientific conflicts, uh, public participation in this conflict, uh, and uh, the compatibility with, uh, of this conflict with democracy. That's, that's why I choose the, the, the question of uh, the title. And uh, what I will uh, try to do is to show that, to answer to the question of uh, uh, the, the compatibility with, between nuclear waste conflict and democracy, uh, the answer to these uh, questions are not only related to procedures, but 
also to the technical solution themselves. That is why I think we need, will be my, uh, my point of view, we need to develop on this kind of subject uh, a political sociology of technology. So what are the points of departure of, uh, of my argument? As you know, I, I, I belong to a community, the STS community. We talked about that this morning. A lot of people are, uh, here, I think, uh, come from, uh, come from uh, this uh, STS community, science and technology studies community. And in this, this community, but also elsewhere, there is uh, what we could call a common sense about this kind of uh, subject, about technical, social technical controversies. This common sense says, first, that conflicts can be productive for, for technical innovation and for democracy. In fact, as you know, it is an old tradition, in uh, old tradition of thought in social sciences, to say that conflict, contrary to the appearance, could be productive for democracy. So, in STS, uh, this tradition exists, and this tradition is says that controversy could, be, could enrich, in fact, technical innovation and enrich democracy. The second point of this common sense is to say, consist in saying that public participation can be a way uh, to make conflict productive. And so, in, if we take nuclear issues, the common sense says that democratizing nuclear waste policy, for example, means opening decisions more actors. I don't contest this common sense because I belong to, the, to, this, uh, to this common sense. I share this common sense. But my concern is to explore the potential productivity of nuclear waste conflict. Their potential to enrich nuclear waste politics and technology. Is it possible, this kind of enriching? The question can be asked because what we can observe in nuclear waste policies so far appears to be the contrary, appear to be unproductive conflicts. Very polarized conflict, very strong conflict, but we can't see any progress in terms of democracy and in terms term of technological innovation. So the question is, what are the roots of this unproductiveness? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry, the, the translation. Yeah, yeah because my, I forgot to say that in my talk I will present for the first time the general argument, and after I'm going back to, to the, the illustration by nuclear, French nuclear waste policy. Okay. So, I'm so talking about the... Yes, it's after. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. No, okay. But I think to, to understand the, the, the unproductiveness of uh, nuclear waste conflict, we need to recall that Nuclear waste is a question of the past. Michael Schneider talked about that, in fact, this morning in his way, saying that, in fact, uh, history doesn't matter in this, in this area. On the one side, obviously, nuclear waste is a question of the future. When we talk about nuclear waste, we talk about future generation. But on the other side, it is, above all, a question of the past. I mean by that, that nuclear waste an old issue, it's not an emergent risk. And in this situation, history doesn't matter. After 50 years of research, a lot of national nuclear waste are now in a strong past dependency. There is a lot of investment, a lot of research avenues that, that have been closed, and in fact, there is what the economists call a past dependency. That's the see because if you look at the nuclear waste, national nuclear waste policies in Europe, for example, 
There is no uh, 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 solution that nuclear agency consider as a solution. This solution is a geological disposal of nuclear waste. And this solution is regarded as the only one. Everything in other world, everything seems already decided and nothing could be changed. So, for a nuclear agency, and for nuclear people, for government uh, as well, nuclear waste is now only a question of social acceptability. So, in this situation, it is, we, we, we can understand that it's, it is difficult to see how conflict could be productive, how they could lead to a shared decision, because decisions are already made, and they seem not to be changed. How uh, consequently, how, how this conflict could improve the technical project, such conflict could be called non-divisible or indivisible conflict. I will explain this, uh, this notion. So, the interest of this distinction, this distinction is to see more clearly the paradox of conflict on nuclear waste disposal. Because, paradox, because on the one side, all the instruments that are used to deal with conflict are generally based on the <coughs> idea of negotiation, public participation, public debate, compromise, etc. The question is not yet to eliminate contaminated groups. But on the other side, we are facing indivisible conflicts because the choice of a solution is irreversible, is presented 
as irreversible. And technical solutions are irreversible. So the argument is that there is, in fact, a tension between demo democratic ways to, to deal with conflict by negotiation, between participation, involvement of stakeholders, etc., in the nature of this conflict. The question is now to uh, understand uh, how this, uh, this contradiction is uh, uh, dealt with. need to, 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 uh, to imagine, in fact, two ways to escape from this tension or contradiction. And these two ways could be called configuration or models. Okay? It's just a way to problematize the, the, the issue. In the, the first configuration consists in staying on the same path and adapting instruments to deal with this conflict. In this situation, the idea is to change the environment but for people, people are part of the idea, but not the project itself. And that's Michael uh, uh, this, this morning with the, the long-term pass, in fact. We stay in the same pass because, because of the investment uh, made in, in, in the technical option, for example. In this configuration, you can understand that the role of participation is to change the I mean, environment, but not the decision itself, nor the technical project itself. Because the conflicts are not available for negotiation, it is acceptable to use participation in a less democratic way. When I say it is acceptable, it does mean people can see that acceptable. It's acceptable to use participation in a less democratic, democratic way, and actually, uh, in this configuration, participation is only a way to inform or, or, or communicate with people, to educate people, but not to, to share the decision. In the second configuration, uh, the second configuration is very uh, different. Because the, the second configuration consists in adapting the technical object so as to be able to use classical democratic instruments. It is to say to give sense to the public participation debate, etc. So in the second configuration, the political war, for example, is to make the technical object debatable and the issue decidable again. Uh, transforming the indivisible conflict to a divisible conflict. interesting with the French nuclear waste policy according to me is that we can see with history these two configurations. Not exactly but a trend uh, with this, each of these configurations. It is uh, nuclear waste policy in France is a long story but to, to make a uh, be simple, we can start the, 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 this story at the, in the middle of the 80s when the French Radioactive Waste Management Agency, ANDRA, presented a technical uh, long term solution for the high level nuclear waste. And this solution is, is, was, this, was the irreversible geological storage. There is a lot of uh, advantages from the nuclear industry point of view to, 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 to opt for this for, for this, uh, this solution. I, I need to be quick, sorry. Okay. So at 
this mo at this time, the only problem for Anta was to find appropriate sites. The problem is that in, at the end of the 80s, the search for sites made the problem very visible to the general public and the opposition of the public are of the concerned group, neighbor, environmental associations, contribute to reopen the controversy over, about the best solution. What is very interesting at this time was well, the reaction uh, to this conflict. To deal with, con with this conflict, Andra presented its technical concept as the best solution, and even as the only one. So, steady in the same path. And in this context, the political work was mainly to explain the decision to the people concerned and to make it acceptable by information, consultation, and participation. But again, we find here the paradox I mentioned earlier, is that mechanisms of debate or participation are implemented when the technical solution is not debatable anymore and could not be revised. So you can see the problem because how we participate, why uh, uh, implement some uh, participation procedure when the technical solution is not debatable, when the problem is already decided. In this story, we can observe a change, in fact, in, uh, at the beginning of the, uh, the beginning of the 19th. Because following the local conflict, in fact, the, issues, the issue appeared in uh, the political scene. And uh, an act of parliament in 1991, the so-called Bataille I don't know if you, maybe you, you have heard Law change the approach of the issue because the law uh, said that no definitive management solution is dictated, but uh, only three research avenues uh, uh, were decided. So it's a kind of uh, an act, what I could call an, an active indecision. Among these uh, research options, you, 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 can, you can see that you have a new uh, uh, kind of geological storage that named reversible geological storage. And And since, uh, since 1991, in fact, the notion of reverse, this notion of reversibility has come to occupy a central place in debates and decision-making concerning the management of high-level level radioactive waste. And for example, during the new prospection campaigns to find new sites, the concern group constantly called for the application of this principle. In December 1991, the French government claimed the necessity of reversibility of the geological, disposed, uh, geological storage to, or disposal. And the French government said that, we call that the condition of acceptance, very interesting because there are two reasons in fact. The condition of acceptance for decisions is related to their reversibility, that is to say the possibility to come back to on this decision and to revise it. And Roland said that it is crucial that the future generations not be bound by decisions that have already been made and they be, that they be in, in a position to change their strategy according to any technological and theological change that may have occurred in the meantime. So it's a claim to claim 
for the for uh, reversibility uh, principle. But to resume this history, we can see that we, we, we shift from a decision style and technological solution marked by irreversibility to, to solutions and decision making process characterized by reversibility. So reversibility could be seen as an instrument to increase acceptability, but and I think that's the point, that's the important point. It has led to a change of the technical project and has contributed to present the issue as open and decidable again. So, I'm not saying that the conflict is solved, not at all, but as the decision is remaining open to new information or new formulations of uh, what is at stake, this conflict could be no tragedy. Is to say that public participation in this context uh, makes sense, could make sense. In fact, with reversibility, we, I, I mean that we are now in a, what we internationally call a divisible country. What are the lessons uh, of this uh, this case, in fact? and what could what could be the proposals for studying uh, social technical conflict based on on this uh, argument about uh, the difference between uh, indivisible and divisible conflict? My first point will say to to, to conclude, in fact, that uh, it is not enough. Uh, when we are interested by, by uh, democratization of, uh, of uh, uh, this uh, of nuclear issue, it is not enough to, to study participation procedures themselves or technical objects themselves. We should focus on techno political configuration. It's not the Gabriel Esch concept, because it's not a concept here, but we just, the idea that technical object participation procedures and ways to deal with conflict are related. So we can understand anything if we don't uh, if we don't if we don't take into account the fact that they are very related. The second point I think it's important in the discussion about the possibility of public participation in this area is that conflict could be productive only in a specific configuration. I mean, only if they are first transformed into divisible conflict. This transformation is, in other words, a condition of possibility to make the, to make the conflict productive, both for democracy and for technology. Reversibility, according to me, in the case of nuclear waste, is such a condition. But obviously, this condition is only a condition of possibility. Okay. That does not mean that the object is negotiated in reality. If we take the example of reversibility in the French case, we, we, we should ask the question, is, is this principle, is, is it just a new tool for increasing uh, acceptability or something more real, but I think I, I'm not. I can't uh, give an answer, uh, definitive answer to this question, because we will see what uh, what happened. But what is important, I think, from a sociological point of view, is that reversibility gives rise to action and to mobilization and criticism, and that's important from the sociology point of view to, to study that, in fact. So, but uh, the point that I, I, I wanted to, uh, to, to, to make is that it is not enough to talk about public participation. We need to take into account the, the 
state of the technical solution. Is it divisible? Is it indivisible? And it's a, it's a really important, I think, condition of possibility to um, democratize the, the, the democracy. Thank you very much, Yannick. Um, unfortunately, we had the Chinese.